Welcome to Real Terms for AI on the road. We're here with one of our developer advocates, Fred, and we're gonna ask you some questions today. All right. So season two of our show is all about agents. So let's start with the easy question. What's an agent? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think we all have our personal definitions of an agent. Um, I would say an agent is uh, a, a model. There might be some wrappers around it uh, to orchestrate, but ultimately the agent is some kind of goal, is able to act on the world. Uh, so it has access to the environment um, and it's probably doing things in more than one step. So I give it a larger goal and, and then it's working towards that goal. It may ask me for feedback, it may work autonomously. I think these are all inclusive. And then I think uh, maybe a year from now we'll have some shared definition of an agent, but for now I have my own personal version. So you, you mentioned something there that's actually, I think, I think really interesting, in particular for like software developers. You said environment. So how do you think about an agent interacting with like applications and services and all the other things that application developers have already built? Yeah, I think ultimately I want an agent to interact with everything that I interact with, Okay. but at a scale that only an agent can do. Okay. So I can browse the web, but an agent can browse 10 websites or 100 websites uh, sequentially in parallel. Uh, it can read a 30 page PDF in like no time. <laughs> That'll take me a couple yeah. hours, right? And on the other hand, there are things that currently I'm much better at, right? I have a lot of context that I bring with me and the agent less so, uh, but we can complement each other and the agents, uh, they make up for in volume, what I yeah. make, so it's quality versus quantity. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the marriage there. How do you think about service design then? So coming to like true application development, right? If I'm turning an agent on yeah. a thousand requests to an API, like how am I, how are you thinking about load in those scenarios? And what should we be doing from like a defensive coding to you know, make agents come to life, but not break everything else that, that they're trying to actually hit? Yeah. Well, uh, like a lot of things, the uh, the answer to, uh, oh, I have some kind of problem in implementation with my agent or with my AI is actually possibly more agents and more AI. <laughs> so the key insight here is that um, if you've worked with an LM, you might find that it is much better at evaluating and assessing yeah. the situation than it is in producing, or at least it's a lot more reliable. Yeah. So if you give it sort of a, a a free-form human statement or a model-generated statement, it can very reliably tell you if it sort of meets certain criteria, mm -hmm. especially if you're careful about how you craft the question. But if you ask it to generate something, occasionally, not necessarily hallucinate, but it produces something that's maybe not that useful, it's out of context, yeah. it's out of the distribution, as we say. Um, so you can deploy your models, have them do things, and have another model sort of double check and supervise, and that will greatly produce the quality. So you think about if a model with, let's say you have a 1% error rate, maybe it's 0.1, doesn't matter. You put another model on that, now you take the 1% and you get 1% of that. So you can very quickly stack these up and get something that's really reliable. Uh, but ultimately you have to still be practical with, with users and the user interface and you know validate with the user that the outcome is desirable and you know have a way to sort of have the user say the undo or the redo button and then you should be golden. We talked a lot about agent architectures. What was your aha moment with agents when you feel like you got it for the first time? If you can remember. Um, I think it's, I, I would describe like Gemini deep research as an agent, right? To give it a task. And um, I was discussing sort of uh, solar projects with my son and, you know, I have some ideas about, you know, where the prices of solar have been going and what's happening in the industry, but a lot of this is sort of anecdotal and very biased. So, you know, I asked Gemini to like do some research and, you know, bring me back a summary. And then like, you know, a number of minutes later, I had this report and it was very helpful because it gave both of us sort of a little bit of grounding or more data points to research. I think that for me was the first time an agent was like really useful in a task that was, you know, hyper relevant to, to me. So last question. Okay. What are your thoughts on vibe coding and when was the last time you vibe coded something? Oh, um, somewhere, let's see, slept for eight hours, a couple hours before that, like, like 10 hours ago, Firebase Studio actually, um, had to build a little app and like, that would have taken me hours. It was like three minutes. So, awesome. uh, yeah. We end every episode with happy prompting. Will you give us a happy prompting on three? Happy prompting on three? Yeah. So would you say happy prompting? Prompting right yeah. Okay. All right.
One, two, three. Happy prompting!